video, I'm going to be finishing up the art set picture, the Batwoman. But I wanted to show you specifically how I did the back. Even from the beginning, from when I first saw this picture, I saw a smoky back. I wanted it misty. I wanted it smoky. I wanted it eerie. In the case of putting a solid black background on this picture, I would have used a marker underneath the pencil, and that would have given me a really rich black. I didn't want that for this picture. I wanted my undercolors to come shining through the black and create sort of a swirly, misty, shiny background. And I'm going to show you how I did this. You're going to need a couple of things. I have my putty beige. I've got white. I have a little bite. I'm running out. I have my Chinese black. This is from Derwent. This is the drawing pencil, and it's my preferred black. You can use Prismacolor black on this. It works just the same. 20% cool gray, and then I have a 90%. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create the background colors. And I'm not even worried about it being neat or following any sort of order. I just want to create color on the page. And then I'm going to add a little bit of gray in there. I'll come back when I'm, fit, you know, when I fill up this paper. Anybody can do this. You just slap and color on. So here I have the bottom layers and you can see I added all sorts of grays with the putty beige and there's different hues coming out and it's covered. And you also want several layers. You don't want just one because the blending pen is, it works better with multiple layers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black and here's where I'm going to want to be smooth, doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm going to cover over. So I will come back when I get this done. All right, we're done <laughs> and I'm ready to make magic. Okay, I have about two layers of the black over the different colors. And I'm going to get out my handy dandy Prismacolor blending magic marker. Yes. Okay. Do you ever do this? If you have two ends of a magic marker that open up, I never get the right end. Got it. Now it's black. I don't even have to make sure this is clean. Normally I would say clean your tip off because look what happens. And you don't want to use that. But if you work on it, eventually it will clear up. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to swirl. Blending, blending, blending. And eventually you're going to get down to those bottom colors. See, it's starting to come up over here. And it also, it develops. Now you see it's starting to look a little bit smoky. Now, you don't want to do the whole entire thing because you do want to leave black areas, but you can go in and fix. Clean it off. But don't do this on your page. That's obvious. Oh, calligraphy. Okay. So, at least I had this side coming up without taking up too much time in the blog. Okay, so we'll just put the cap back on. And go on to the next step. Now we're going to start to control the swirl, the swirl, the swir swirls. Okay, we're going to control the swirls. And I'm going to go back with my black. And I'm going to start to create different effects. And now I'm getting out my white. And I'm going to lighten up some of the areas. I need a white. Look how we, we should have a contest. Who can get the tiniest nibby? We're going to get some little ghosty effects going on in here. And we're going to repeat the process. See, I like that little area here, so I'm not going to touch it. We're going to just keep going in areas that you need more of. Different shades of gray. Those backgrounds take a long time. People give up on them too soon. And this is why I tell you to use one of these. Always. It's too late for me now. It's over. But you never work with black without one of those. Tracing paper. Cheap. Now you know what I'm actually doing. 
I'm going to apply this to a larger paper and you'll be able to see how nice this effect really is. It's kind of hard to see it from a swatch. I did the background exactly how I did in the swatch but on a larger scale and you can see uh, at this point I've added my bottom colors, my grays. I've added in a moon, uh, just a circle at the top, just to break up the monotony of the background and I'm edging it with some putty gray. The bottom color of the moon I did in the putty gray and then I'm going to add other grays, that's the 90% and the 10%. That was a 10% French. Uh, if you need help with the moon, I have a tutorial on just doing the moon. On top of it, I added some sunburst yellow to give it a slight yellow glow. And the very edge I used a white jelly roll pen. The bottom of the uh, skin I did in light peach. Then I moved on to nectar. And then my third color on the skin is going to be sienna brown. This picture was actually really easy to do. But you have to keep at it. The tooth on this paper never gives out. I didn't get to burnishing until I had over 10 layers on here. Especially with black. This picture is not going to look good until the very, very end. Once you get all the colors and layers on top, then it takes on a more realistic feel. But because the paper is so good, you have a lot of layers to put on to fill it up and give it that really rich look. To blend it all together, I used cream. I don't know what's with my camera that the color wasn't being picked up, but the skin is very brown. I don't know why it looks so white. I left the face very light because I wanted to look like the moon was shining the light down straight on her face. When you're done, I highly recommend a seal spray and I used the Krylon seal, high gloss, and you can see it has a photo finish. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.